friends, you already know, it's Renel. Oh! And today, I will be showing you how my class and myself created the animated short on Feta and Fly. So if you want the tea on that, continue watching. So first thing first, the story. So based on what I have learned about strong storytelling, and I definitely believe in it too, is when you're coming up with any idea, you should add a piece of yourself to it, just to make it more effective and relatable. And of course, the story was about me and how I struggle sometimes with breaking out of my shell, and I knew it was something that any and anybody could relate to in some way, because we all have goals in life, whether big or small, but sometimes... We like to take on people and study what they might say or just the idea of failing if we try could really hold us back but in times like that we really have to push ourselves to just do it because no one else is going to do it for you so you had to do what you had to do and even if it didn't work out the first time or the second time or the million time in the end you know you'll feel good about yourself because you try Anyway, a good thing to note is that your story probably might not remain the same. So in other words, I had to make one set of changes because in the beginning, my lecturer tell me that the story could be stronger and I wouldn't lie, <laughs> I felt a little offended because I was thinking my idea was perfection. Ugh. <laughs> so anyway, to do that I used something called a brainstorm chart to help me out and that's how I ended up going with the idea that included the cat. So in the end it worked out because I had a, a clear and strong beginning, middle and end. So after that, the script, the storyboard and the animatic had to be done in order for us to know exactly what was supposed to happen on screen and the length of the animation itself. concept art. So this is the fun part where we got to bring out our creative side in figuring out the style and all that while designing the characters. And as I said before, you probably may not stick to the first idea and I am honestly glad that I didn't stick to the first idea that I had because child... <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, we use something called a tear sheet, which is reference images together with the character description to help design the characters. I also decided to scrub the main characters in ZBrush so that we'll have all of their correct views to use as reference when animating. And let me just say this one time. Please stop drawing things from your mind that is ghetto you will not bring your ghetto here you will not bring your ghetto here use <laughs> just use references please <laughs> so my idea for the backgrounds was to make them feel like home or like in the caribbean somewhere in the caribbean um, so if you have seen the animation itself, you seen the film, um, you realize that the backgrounds do look familiar, or even the houses in the background do look like houses that you will see in Trinidad or Tobago. And I also did the backgrounds to be done in 3D because I wasn't trying to have anybody draw all of that. Nobody in our time for that. Anyway, the background concepts were done first so we could use them as reference because remember reference is important 
and as we had this we were able to make something called an asset list so we'll know what needs to be modeled and we'll know what needs to be colored so we started off with the block out which is the layout of each background then we would move on to the sculpting and I also came up with some rules so that everything would be consistent and the poly count or the subdivisions wouldn't be too high because if it was our machines probably would uh, explode and after all the assets were done they were put together in blender so that I could set up the lighting and put them to render so because of the, the style chosen for the character let me just say it, <laughs> it made the process very challenging but luckily we had something called a production sheet to help keep us organized so that we know who's working on what scene and the status. I know, it's plenty. We almost died. Call the ambulance! So this was something that was very new to me and I did learn a whole lot from it. And we first started off with the color script so that we knew exactly where the light would be coming from and what kind of emotion each scene was supposed to be giving. And because we had this, we knew where to set up the lights. Now for a film like this, the song was very important as it didn't have any dialogue so I worked with the music technology students from UTT to help get the song to where it needed to be and I did learn a lot from this part of the process as well in terms of like when to start working on the song and what is the best approach to take so in the future I know what to do So this is the final stage and this is where we would put all the scenes together and do some color correcting to make sure the character is mixing properly with the background. So it was a lot, it really was. Yeah. <laughs> because we're not basic and we wanted this project to basically outshine all the work we ever did in the past and we also wanted to show Pixar and Disney that them and are nothing on me girl 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 girl, oh, girl this girl stop. is delusional anyway all this would not have been possible if we didn't communicate often or if we didn't give each other feedback or even lend in a hand whenever someone needed help with something and at the end of the day, everybody just understood the assignment. So, thank you so much for watching. And I do hope that you learn something or things by watching the video. And remember not to wait on anyone to believe in you. You gotta believe in yourself. You. Not me. I mean, yes, I believe in you. I, I believe in it. <laughs> and I hope you stick around to see what's next. I'm not scared.